this. Isn't it? We've probably done that before. If you haven't done it before, don't worry. If you're clunky at that movement, don't worry about it. it comes in time. Okay. Um, clunky would be a, a word I'd use about myself quite a lot. Um, in terms of learning a new technique. Clunky and bumpy road and then smooth as you as you get better. So don't worry about it if you're not too good at it right now. Okay, so we're gonna use that movement to set up the omoplata today. Um, and so we've seen it before, and obviously that, that last drill that we did is like your kind of armbar drill to here, for here, okay? Or like your fast armbar drill, pulling your back down, flashing your leg up here really quick. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go collar um, and sleeve, so cross collar grip here and sleeve, okay? And we're gonna set up the omoplata on this arm. So instead of going this way for armbar here, like we normally would, or not normally would, but maybe like you can do. I'm going to break my opponent's posture, open my legs really wide, and use that momentum uh, from, from that leg we spoke about going underneath the armpit, and to attack this arm on this side. So when I open, I'm able to, to here. Okay, so I'm using the same thing. You'll see that my head moves a little bit, but also I generate like a lot of momentum to him, because I like to keep on kicking him over. If you just go here, like here, this elbow's gonna get in the way. Okay, so no matter how much you want to open the gun, this way, as long as his arm is here, and it's not gonna work for you. You have to remember, and when I go around this, like turn this side, he doesn't want to let this arm come with me because he's wary of the, the arm lock on this side. So very often they'll, they'll leave that arm behind, okay, which is good for you. You need to be able to pull his head down. Open this leg beneath as much as you can beneath his arm and come over the neck. So from here, open and then here. This is our entry, okay, for this side. Okay? So, lots of different ways for the arm platter here today. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to go heavy on his hips with one leg, heavy on his head with the other. Okay? Like this. We're almost going to think about like not uh, just like triangling or what you can do, like they're in a little position. Today I'm just thinking about putting the weight of my hips, which means that my back side is just slightly off the mat here, and he's carrying the weight. So if he wants to lift his head up, my leg is blocking him. And if he wants to lift his hips up, my leg is blocking him. So actually, this doesn't look too much like omoplata right now. It looks like uh, kind of a bad armbar. You know, I'm going the wrong way. But don't worry about that too much. Key point here, I can't do it when his head is up like this. I go like here. It's not going to work for me. So break his posture, bring your knees to your chest, pull him down using the, the collar grip, and from there, then we let him come out. Okay? Let's look here. That's our entry, okay? Are you happy enough with that? And we're going to stop there, okay? Heavy split legs on the back of the head. So the way I want to see it done, that's it. Close guard, cross collar grip, near side sleeve grip. Get here. Took the sound beside him when you do. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. So it, uh, the other, the opposite hand. So he's keeping this hand inside. I'm just gonna turn around here so everybody can see. So when I go, that this hand stays here like this. So a couple of people saying that. The first thing is usually they take it out because they're afraid of the amber, as I was saying before. But if they keep their elbow here, like this, I usually just this, the advantage of this position is, uh, if, if when I go like for the full on platter. Usually it's like gone anyway, naturally, okay? But if you do want to get rid of it and the hand is still in there, just kick down with this leg hard enough that they're gonna like pl face plant and I guarantee you he doesn't want to do that. So when you go like this way, he'll take the hand off. Pretty handy, handy. <laughs> okay, so split leg choice, keep this grip on the collar here. I don't want him like running away and I don't want to, I want to keep as much control and posture as possible. And you can see that my legs are quite wide, which goes against our usual instincts to like pinch the knees. But like I say, I'm trying to control the hip and I'm trying to control the head. And I've got this hand tucked around the corner. All right. So this way of doing the omoplata is um, just like different to some other ways. That's okay. And um, so a lot of times people go very early here and start to sit up as soon as they get here, start to sit up. But today I'm not gonna do that. I'm particularly just gonna count if my opponent is, uh, is like bigger than me. I like to, um, I like to keep them uh, really under control and not come up too early in case they win kind of the fight, uh, the scramble. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release my hand off the collar first and change so that I hold his wrist, okay? I'm going to take his sleeve here. And now I'm going to go down to the pants. And don't worry if you can't see that from there. I'm going to change my hand. So from here, I'm going to control his pants down here, near side leg, and his sleeve. And now I'm going to change position. Okay, one of the things about this position here now is that he's on his knees. And sometimes when they're, they're strong, um, or even if they're just mobile, he'll always be trying to either sit up, like posture back up onto your knees there, like lift me back out like this, or he's going to try and roll. And I'm going to prevent the two of those things from happening by now giving the full weight of my two legs on the shoulder. So that when he goes to lift up here, I make it difficult for him. If you're much smaller than your opponent, and he starts like lifting you up really easily, lift again there, on, okay, like this. Pinch your knees and put your legs straight up in front. Now lift on. Now it's the weight of my hips. So it's very good for you here. Because instinctively, uh, especially if you learn the omoplata before, you might go here. But now you can see, like for me, especially because I got long legs, uh, my feet are on the mat here, and the weight isn't on his shoulder. There's a lot of space here and a lot of wriggle room. So for me, I actually go here. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a little rule for this type of omoplata. I don't sit up until he's down. I'm going to put him down first, put him on his belly first, before I sit up. Because I don't want to sit up like now, and then just have him be strong. Boom. Back me up and over here. It put me in trouble. So once I put my feet here to the mat, I'm going to punch my arm straight, that's uh, connected to his hands, or to connect to his pants. And from here, I'm going to hip escape out this way and drop my knees to the mat here. Hip, 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 until I get him flat. Now, he's really compromised. I'm going to sit up, pinch my knees, hug underneath the arm here, and now. Lever up. Okay, a couple of, couple of things here. Well, I've got on face down. And um, sometimes you might have seen it like we triangle the legs. It's not wrong. It's just for me, I've got long legs, and I always found that uh, as long as I kept my knees tight, it was good enough. So for me, so if you're able to triangle your legs, it's perfectly fine. The idea is that your legs are a unit, weight on the shoulder. Does that make sense to everybody? So if my legs are separate, the, 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 the weight of my two legs is in there, and the armor plat is loose. So for me, I'm here. Nice and close. For the finish, all I think about doing is hugging. Heel the shoulder up a little bit. Just turn my knees to the mat here. And there's my finish. Okay? Let's have a look at that all again. And be careful, just especially from the beginning, when you're coming out of the omoplata, don't like jump up. You've still got your his arm trapped. Okay. That's going to be. Okay. Break his posture. Opening here now. Big circle with this. Lifting your hips. If he keeps his hand in, that's his base. There comes his hand out to prevent him from face planting. Nice wide legs. Okay, we got here. Step one, transfer your hands, catch the pants. Here. Okay? Step two is bring your feet to the mat now. Change your angle. And keep heavy. Okay? From here, bolt straight arm. And now start to hip escape away, turning your knees to the mat. Towards him. Bulk straight arm, that's a frame, okay? All right? That's me generating a little momentum to sit up. Gal go to his hips. Now we can connect to his upper body. Knees pinched together. Ball to the mat. Sit up one more time. Good. Let's go. Three, two, one. Yeah, so, um, we're going to go with counters. So, a lot of the time when you go for the omoplata, especially nogi, if you do a nogi, the omoplata is more, way, way more difficult to finish because like, of the lack of grips. And obviously, I can't grab his pants the way we're doing here. Little things like that, controlling his wrist is harder. Um, it, it really develops into like a sweep because the guy gets to roll very, very quickly. Um, I like to attack it like, like with meaning. <laughs> So in other words, I like to like really mean it as a submission, but I'm pretty happy when I sweep the guy off it. So in other words, I want to tap him, but like very often, 
the guy is going to be, be able to roll. So we're again clearing his hand. Well, for one second, they're on. When I go and I go to transfer, even when I get here and I even grab his feet, he's able to like generate momentum, he's able to roll. Okay, at this stage, I can't stay here. Okay, because he's going to scramble up, he's going to come up on top. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Let's do it again. But I need to follow him. But when I follow him, I have to do the right things. So, from here, open. I go here for him a plot. And even say, like, maybe sometimes I'm like slow to get the pants or he breaks the grip. You know, up here. When I go, he's able to come here. Come up and follow him to here. Okay? You still have good position here like this. Uh, but you're not going to be able to stay here for long. What we're going to do tonight is an easy back step. So from here, yeah, I can just like kick out and just take top. And that'll be just about fine. It's no problem. But today, when I come up, keep control of the wrist. I'm going to take this hand, put it beside my knee. Okay, here like this. And from here then, I'm going to use just this for a back step. Okay? Let's look again. So nice and easy. There I go. He rolls. Roll it up. Up. Let's not leave that one in the video. It's going to say that was on, not me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do there now. I'm going to have to be like Steven Spielberg. I thought, what? what? <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Let's look again. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely cutting that out. Okay. <laughs> so he goes, he runs. <laughs> <I'm gonna chase. laughs> okay. <laughs> so from here, I go. Go try. He rolls. Follow him. Back step. Okay. For now, let's just stay. Okay. What can we do? Is that fall to our side? And just attach triangle here. Nice. Leave your arm locks here and stuff like that. But for now, let's just stay on top. Back step. Just think about bringing your knee to his ear. Pull his head up off the mat and connecting your heel and your knee together. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, oh, that's right. Um, I almost think actually some drills like this one, especially your, your partner will do a more natural role when you're putting a lot of pressure on them, like in realistic fashion. So when you actually go to do like do this in a match or do this in a round, you're probably going to find that your partner uh, rolls a bit more fluidly. So don't worry again, same as we spoke about with the, the drills at the start. If you're a bit clunky when you're rolling through here, don't worry about it. So from here, open, here, here's the problem for him. Make sure guys that your partner has the pan tucked back here. Okay, so a couple of times people were here, and that's not gonna work. Make sure it's tucked behind him. We're going and actively trying to submit him here, but he's got a roll now. When he does, we follow him, we bring our knee up. So look to here, see that the knee is trapping the tricep here like this? And pulling this up and controlling here. Very, very important. Other than that, if you let it go, he's gonna like just shake this out and just go. Okay, I'm not letting him do that, see? Hand goes close to his hip here like this. This knee is staying on the mat. So the problem that people are having is when they go to try and go now, they're putting to do this. Okay, I stay super low. You see, it's just a motion in my leg, really. Okay, everybody happy with that? Okay, let's do a finish. Let's pull his head up and make sure that my heel is contacting his knee. And from here, we can attack the uh, Kimura. Of course, people are saying, who can I just a minute from here? Honestly, the, when I go to do this, that feels a bit unstable real time. He starts to shake out and escape out the back door here, right? So what I'm going to do instead is pull his head up, connect to my shin, and I'm just going to keep that arm nice and tight tucked in. From here, I'm just going to fall to my side. Close the triangle, pull his head, and squeeze. Simple. So it's a little different from a lot of the triangles you're going to do because the, I will come over here again now. The arm is on the wrong side, but um, the pressure is enough that you're going to be able to finish. If not, I'm going to show you an alternate finish as well. Just, Especially for your blue belt, you can do it. So when I push the hand down here, again, he's gonna roll on the near side shoulder, and I'm gonna encourage him to roll by using my weight. I trap this now, look. 
trap it with your calf and shin and your thigh between your hamstring from here and it doesn't need to be like a big spin it just needs to be your leg moving back pull this head up connect to your shin here and just fall to your shoulder his arm is going to be trapped beneath like this from here pull the head like so he escapes his hand here like this he starts to let go here and you can't get it no problem try to catch him wrist lock him as well if you're at it okay if his hands remain stuck underneath here lever the elbow up for like a nasty little um, shoulder lock as well okay all good so back step into triangle this time yeah all good let's go three to one So when we do it, your partner rolls here. Two things I want to say, one is like chase them up now, get up now. Don't use the momentum, okay? Then when we back step, go here. Now we're not pulling them up onto their knees, okay? Particularly because our position is really great. Falling just to here. And the fact that it's not a perfect triangle is compensated for the fact that he's like here. Okay, two things, people have a problem. Joining the, the feet can't go here. Keep your knees pinched and take your time. Adjust until you get the best, the best round you can. Squeeze, pinch. Okay? So the position uh, sucks. So that's what's going to give you more time. So don't bring them up on top of you for this one. You're just falling to your side. Are we happy enough? Any questions? Beautiful. Let's get a milk and water and let's try. Let's go.